Greetings cinephiles and welcome to episode 12 of Matt Hates Everything. Today we have some big, big news. Uh, Entertainment Weekly has come out and said that they are going to be doing an animated Magic the Gathering television series. And for those of you who don't know, um, I've been playing this game, Magic the Gathering, for about 20 years. And I'm super, super excited to find out what these individuals are going to be able to do with such a rich and varied source material. So what I've done for you today is I've picked five of my favorite main characters called Planeswalkers from the Magic the Gathering universe and I've assigned them all voice actors or even actors I would like to see play the roles in an actual film. Um, I'm going to go into the details about who's involved in the project. This is going to be your one-stop shop for all info in regards to this series that I'm super, super, super stoked to check out. So we'll hang out for a few minutes, let's watch the intro, and then we'll get right down into the good stuff. Alright, thanks for watching the intro, and don't forget, there is a post credit scene after this video is over that you're absolutely going to love. So let's get down to the brass tacks about this uh, Magic the Gathering anime that we have to look forward to. Um, the executive producers are a big deal. The executive producers are the Russo brothers. The Russo brothers are the ones, the geniuses behind the Avengers Endgame movies. They're very well uh, adept at making ensemble cast films where all the characters get a chance to shine. And Magic the Gathering really, really needs this because the the Planeswalkers, which I'm sure will be the main focus of the show, are a very varied and diverse group. There's good guys, there's bad guys, there's good girls, there's bad girls. It, it extends the whole board. Um, apparently, the Russo brothers themselves were also really, really big players in Magic. Um, I'm sure the rest of you know that they were also really into Fortnite, so I think this could be the perfect, perfect, perfect vehicle for them. Now, um, as far as the writers for the scripts, they've um, went out and got some pretty heavy hitters, especially in the uh, animated realm. So we have the writers behind such shows as Star Wars Rebels, uh, Clone Wars, um, the Agent Carter TV series, and the Tick TV series are all working on this Magic the Gathering television show that we have to look forward to. Now, um, unfortunately, currently there is no release date. There's just a teaser picture of Chandra Nalar, but the picture looks phenomenal, by the way. Um, you can find it anywhere on the internet. Look on comicbooks.com, uh, Entertainment Weekly, Netflix has released something. There's tons of uh, news outlets that are reporting this. This is going to be a very, very big deal. And with the success that we've seen from Castlevania that we have to look forward to, uh, another series which hopefully is going to be more in the lines with that, with more of an adult-themed story because a lot of the things that happen in the game, in the lore, are um, kind of dark and kind of, you know, really looking forward to it. So uh, I promised you that I was going to go through five of my favorite Planeswalkers and um, give you a list of voice actors that I think would do a great job in playing those characters. So let's get right down to it. The first Planeswalker that I wanted to mention was Jace Bellerin. Now, Jace Bellerin is probably the iconic uh, Planeswalker from Magic the Gathering. And for a voice actor, for him, I chose Nathan Fillion. Now, Nathan Fillion, I'm sure you all know from Serenity and Firefly, but he's also done some work in video games. He's done uh, voices in the Halo games, especially Halo 3 ODST and Halo 3. And he was also a voice actor in both of the, both of the Destiny games. Yay, I remembered. Up next, we have Chandra Nalar. Chandra Nalar is the Red Mage, the Fire Mage, the Fire Planeswalker, and she's also very iconic in her own right. And for her, I picked Scarlett Johansson because, well, Scarlett Johansson quite often, especially as Black Widow, has red hair. Chandra has red hair. And I think that she would bring a lot to the character. And with a big name attached to it like that, the show would be sure 
to um, excel and do well for itself. The third planeswalker that I'd like to mention for you is uh, Garuk Wildspeaker. He is the green iconic planeswalker. Now Nissa Redvane, I think is her name. Nissa would probably be a close second, but personally for me and the cards and the kind of games that I like to play, it would definitely be Garuk. Now for Garuk, I picked Leaf Schreiber. Uh, Leaf Schreiber has worked as Sabretooth, and I think his posturing and the way that he speaks, and it would be very easy for him to play something so animalistic and like the apex predator. And Leaf Schreiber just would nail this, and I can almost, when I hear Garuk speak, I hear Leaf Schreiber speak. At number four, we have Elspeth. Elspeth is the ultimate good guy. Well, actually, she's a girl, but she's very knightly and, you know, save the day. And so I had to kind of think for a moment about a heroic female character in another show. And what I was able to come up with was uh, Gwendolyn Christie, who is a Brienne of Tarth from the Game of Thrones. She even looks like what I think Elspeth would look like. So there's going to be pictures up here um, on both sides for everybody. And you'll be able to kind of see what I was talking about. She screams Elspeth. And I think she'd be phenomenal as a voice actress in the role. And I also think she'd knock it out of the park if a live action film was ever to happen. And last but certainly not least, my personal favorite planeswalker is Liliana Vess. She's the black mage. She's the necromancer. She is the ultimate bad guy. And I can't wait to see what they do with this character. Now, for this one, this was super easy. It was a slam dunk. It was a layup. It was the easiest one to pick. There's two. There's only one person who can voice this role, and there's only one person who could play this character in a live-action movie. And you're all going to roll your eyes, and to be honest with you, I really don't care. And, of course, that would be the infamous... Angelina Jolie. As you can see by the pictures up here, she even looks like Liliana. She's the perfect, perfect character. She loves playing bad guys. She did an awesome job as Maleficent, and I would pay millions of dollars to hear her voice that role and to see her play that character in a live action film. So there you have it, and please don't forget to stick around for the after the credit scene because all of a sudden I am all about after the credit scenes. I missed one at Godzilla, and you should not miss this one. So we're going to wrap it up here, and thanks again, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please share it with your friends. Um, I'm on a charge to get to 400 subscribers, and with your guys' help, it's going to be easy, schmeasy, lemon squeezy. So in the immortal words of my favorite YouTuber of all time, Mr. Captain Sexy Pants, a peace. Uh, we're going to re-record that one because I've already managed to mess that one up. What was the actor's name? With another Funko Pop unviewing, unviewing, I don't know, for the animated Star Wars movies. Almost. Here we go. Chandra la 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 la